Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The story of a missing three-year-old here in San Antonio now gripping the nation. The latest on the frantic search for Lena Kiel and an update on the reward being offered for any details. Good deal. Is she okay? And an incredible moment caught on camera in Kentucky moments after a town is demolished by a tornado. We have the full story in your morning headlines. Plus a major incident on I-35 southbound. Stephen Cavazos is in studio with a look at your holiday travel. Plus. The city is offering a way for children to have fun and stay active this holiday break. Coming up details on their winter holiday camp. Hi, good morning. Today it's December 23rd, but we're going to start with the scene just a couple of hours ago. An Amazon truck could be seen hanging off the side of the interstate. A crazy situation unfolding this morning. We have team coverage on this. Katrina Weber live at the scene, but first we want to get over to Stephen Cavazos with an update on that and a look at what you can expect if you plan to hit the roads today. Stephen? Yeah, anything but jolly out there, Max. <laughs> Stephanie, let's take a look at Trans Guy. This is what we've been showing you throughout the last few hours here on uh, KSAT. 35 at Weedner is what we're looking at. The only only progress that we've seen is that that 18 wheeler that Amazon trailer I should say looks like that it's now in that grassy median so it's not dangling or hanging out there I should say uh, but we still have some first responders and are still seeing some big issues out there on the roadways and unfortunately it's not the only problem let's go ahead and take a quick look there because that crash is detected here off 35 but a little bit further up Texas has listed a crash off 35 South Mountain at Topper Wine Road let's jump down there where it was initially happened here off I 35 South and at Wiener you can see all that red does show we have traffic that's built in those southbound lanes, so make sure you look for those alternative routes or maybe just avoid the area this morning because it's not clear when this will start to resolve. Let's take a jump over here because we also have another crash off 410 eastbound at Blanco Road. You can see the buildup of traffic in those eastbound lanes at well as well. Again, it's been a busy morning because we have another crash here off 281 northbound at Jones Maltzberger. And let's take a jump further down right over here, 281 northbound at Grayson Street. As we take another jump here, 35 northbound at Somerset Road. It looks like that crash may have just cleared, but taking a wider look at the map. All that yellow does mean that there's still some fog out there in the area, according to our road weather map. But of course, use caution. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on the roads. Max, Stephanie, or Katrina, we're going to go back to live to Katrina. Pardon me, Katrina, what's the scene looking like right now? Well, good morning, Stephen. A major cleanup going on here along I-35, mainly on the access road. This is where the 18-wheeler landed. That Amazon truck landed after it came off the side of the highway. Now, just in the last few minutes, we saw them take down the trailer, which was dangling, hanging off the edge of the highway. The trailer, or the cab rather, came down. It's still there, and we understand that there is a fuel spill. This has been going on since about 6.30 this morning. This is an incredible sight. People have been stopping by to take pictures. If you check out the video, you will see exactly why. That back end of that 18 wheeler was just hanging off the edge of the highway. Um, now, amazingly, the, no matter how things look, how bad they look, that driver was able to get out and walk away. He's been walking around here. No injuries, according to police and paramedics who had a chance to look at him initially, but quite a mess here on the access road of the highway. This is shut down. It's been shut down since this crash happened. We understand that up on the highway, uh, there are two lanes that are open, but the outermost lane that butts up against this damaged wall is uh, is closed, and that is where there is some cleanup work going on as well. Police told me that this part of the operation here on the access road could take hours, maybe all day, to clean up because, again, there's some fuel that has spilled out of the cab of this the big rig, and uh, also they have a lot of debris down here, and they're not sure what they're going to do about the damaged wall because that's also another dangerous situation. But if there's a, a bright spot in all this, again, the driver not hurt. And also, police tell me, there's nothing inside that Amazon truck trailer, so it doesn't look like it's going to affect anybody's holiday plans for packages. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina Weber, thank you so much. Bright lining. I mean, ooh. I'm going to say, happy no one was injured. Happy right. no gifts were delayed. Taking a live look out there, though, not much to see. Yeah, we still need to be careful out there. Yeah, there's still some fog, and you, you saw there with Katrina's life shot, there's still some dampness. We've still got a little bit of drizzle and mist and that sort of thing going on here. So there's still going to be some slick spots in the roads. 
and it's just been an overall sort of dreary morning. Let's take a look at the time lapse and you can see the fog rolling in. So we're going to start off at 345 this morning and we'll fast forward here to about 5 a.m. The fog really came in and it's been fairly thick last few hours. And you can see some of the moisture on the lens as well. 59 degrees at the airport drizzle fog reported there. South southwesterly winds at about six miles per hour. You see the visibilities around the area. We've seen this sort of shift west just within the last hour or so. So places like Hondo, Uvalde starting to see some fog. Visibility here around San Antonio anywhere from a quarter of a mile up to about a mile and a quarter there at Randolph. As we zoom out some, the fog has moved out towards Eagle Pass and Carrizo Springs as well. Uh, dense fog advisory has uh, been allowed to expire, but you're still going to want to take it slow on some of those roads. Temperatures in the 50s, even 60s. Moisture has surged in and temperatures are quite a bit warmer this morning than they have been. Our forecast for today takes us up to 75 for high, mostly sunny skies once we lose some of this cloud cover, but that will take till about uh, noontime uh, before that happens. And uh, we're going to do this all again tomorrow with some even warmer temperatures. Plus, we've got a look at your mountain cedar count. I'll have that for you in just a second. It jumped into the very high category today. So Mountain Cedar not looking great. One well, more on that here in just a bit, guys. Not good news there, but it looks like a pretty day. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look at today's Nine and Nine. A new reward of $75,000 being offered for help finding a missing three-year-old here in San Antonio. Lena Keel was last seen Monday night at a playground at her apartment complex on the northwest side. The FBI and multiple search parties searching for Lena, asking for anyone with any information to reach out. Just hours after the FDA cleared the first pill to treat COVID-19, the Biden administration says 250,000 treatment courses will be available starting in January, the first of 10 million courses purchased. It's the first oral antiviral for COVID-19 authorized for symptomatic people to take at home before they get sick enough to be hospitalized. A huge relief for millions of people with student debt. The Biden administration has extended the pause on student loan repayments. Borrowers were supposed to start paying again in February, but the new start date is set for May 1st. Nearly 11,000 members of the U.S. Air Force have requested religious exemptions to the military's vaccine mandate. They remain unvaccinated for COVID-19. Air Force officials say none of the requests have been approved as of Wednesday. And if denied, service members can get the vaccine or separate from the military. Heads up for anyone looking to get a new passport soon. You'll be shelling out an extra $20 fee starting on Monday. The United States State Department says the price hike is necessary and that it will ensure it continues to produce one of the most, quote, secure travel and identity documents in the world, end quote. More than 100 million people are expected to hit the road between now and January 2nd. Congestion is expected to be the worst it's been in almost two years. Transportation analytics company Inrex forecasts 34 percent more travelers on the road compared to last year. Dole Fresh Vegetables recalling salads processed at two of their facilities. All of this happening because of possible listeria contamination. Their Dole and private label salads with best buy dates between November 30th, 2021 and January 8th, 2022. A full list of products involved in the recall is now on the FDA website. American Underdog hits theaters this weekend. It's based on the true story of Kurt Warner, who went from stocking supermarket shelves to the Super Bowl and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The film is in theaters on Christmas Day. The Tennessee Titans taking on the San Francisco 49ers tonight for the final Thursday night football game of the NFL season. Both teams playing for a spot in the playoffs. Both teams fielding a top 10 rushing offense as well as solid defensive squads. Kickoff 720 tonight and that's today's Madden. And top stories we're following today. Police say a woman is dead after crashing into a tree on the north side of town. That's right. This all happened just after 2.30 this morning on Jones, Maltzberger, and Carlton Oaks. That's where police say the woman drove off the road and crashed into a tree. We're told she died on the scene. Officers don't believe any other vehicles were involved in this crash. They did find a dead deer in the middle of the road, but right now it's not clear if that's what led up to the crash. 
And a robbery on the west side ends with a teenager in the hospital. Investigators are still trying to work out to figure out who shot him. All right, so take a look. This was the scene just after 1 a.m. This is Valley High Drive, not too far from Loop 410. Police there are telling us two teenage boys walking along the road when a vehicle pulled up next to them. A man got out of the vehicle and demanded their belongings. The suspect allegedly took a gold chain, a bracelet, and a phone, but one of the teens pushed a suspect, and police tell us that's when that suspect shot the 16-year-old in the leg. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police are still searching for that suspect. And the search continues for three-year-old Lena Keel, who was reported missing on Monday evening. And now the Muslim community of San Antonio wants to help find her as well. The Islamic Center of San Antonio is offering a $75,000 reward for any information that leads officials to the little girl. She was last seen playing in the playground in the Villas de Cabo complex on Fredericksburg Road, not far from Warsbach Road, and that's over on the city's northwest side. Lena was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. Uh, police believe she may be in danger, so anyone with any information about her disappearance or her whereabouts, you are asked to call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. All right, in your morning headlines, authorities looking into an explosion at a Texas Exxon plant and an incredible rescue all caught on camera. Plus, police in California are not letting porch pirates get away with people's packages. That story in just a bit. But right now we start with this developing scene out of the Houston area, an overnight explosion at an Exxon Mobil refinery. This is a look at those flames early this morning. It happened in Baytown, about 25 miles outside of Houston around one this morning. Officials gave an update a couple of hours ago saying at least four people are in the hospital right now with injuries. Officials say they're expected to survive those injuries. Residents in the area reported a loud explosion and according to the company there is no shelter in place or hazard to the community. Uh, the available information that we have shows no adverse impact at this time. No shelter in place has been called for the community or near neighbours. The company says they are continuing to monitor the air quality. No word yet on what caused the explosion. All right, taking you to Kentucky, incredible video showing the moments after a massive tornado demolishing the town of Bowling Green. Take a listen. Hey, 329, we got the FEMA, or the, I think a 15-month-old. Hey, Central, can you send us Med Center? Hey, hi, oh my God. Oh, we're going to try to get them to you today. Move easy. Move it easy. All right, go ahead. It's okay. There you go. Good deal. Is she okay? Now, what you just saw was body cam footage of police officers rescuing two babies from a pile of rubble that was their home just moments before the tornado. Sheriff's deputies Trent Arnold and Troy Blue, they were first to the scene after the family called and said their children were missing. After searching, they heard crying in the distance. They found the 15-month-old and 3-month-old who are still in a tube along with a blanket, a pillow, and a Bible. Now the tube or the tub they were in was picked up from the house, thrown down the street. It is a miracle that both of them survived. One was taken to the hospital for a head injury. And taking you to California now, where police are cracking down on porch pirates. Anaheim police are targeting porch pirates by leaving packages with tracking devices oh. in front of houses. We're going to a prearranged residence with the homeowner's consent. Uh, they are either a prior uh, victim of mail theft or package theft. We place the package at the front door and we wait for the signal to go off. Officers in plain clothing riding an unmarked black van de delivered black vans deliver the box with a GPS tracker. So it's sitting at a home near police headquarters where porch pirates have hit twice before. The FedEx package contains iPhones and other popular gifts. Once that package is stolen, an alarm sounds on dispatchers' computers and officers get notified that the package is on the move. They track down the suspect and make an arrest. Since the items inside the box are worth more than $1,000, the crime is considered a felony. Wow. Hopefully this just deters more people from being Grinches. Yeah, we hope so. We hope they'll think twice before they pick up the box. Exactly. All right, time now, 912, 60 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, while many of us are wondering what's going to be under the Christmas tree this year, there are many families here in San Antonio who are wondering where their next meal will come from. Later, a live interview with the San Antonio Food Bank for details on how they are helping this year and what you can do to help. But first, Tiffany Huerta is live with details on 
where you can send your kids for winter break. Dozens of winter camps going on right now, right here in San Antonio. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. Hi, I'm Dana with Republic of Texas Window Company, here to wish our veterans and first responders a very Merry Christmas. Good morning and welcome back. Kids staying physically and mentally active during this winter break, all thanks to the city's winter holiday camp. San Antonio Parks and Rec hosting camps at 18 different community centers across the city. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Palm Heights Community Center with more on these camps. And Tiffany, what are kids doing at these camps? Good morning, Max and Stephanie. They're doing several different activities, but if you start your morning, you got to do some stretches. Just take a look at all these kiddos. This is what it's all about. Sports, fitness, craft, science activities. All these kids are staying active this holiday break. These camps are for children ages 6 to 14. And to talk more about these camps, Sarah with the city's Park and Recreation Department. Good morning. Good morning. Talk to us about these camps and how did this all like begin? Yeah, so we've been running our winter holiday camps for a number of years now. Um, we kind of, we offer a program during the holiday break for kids. Uh, so whenever the school districts are out for school, um, we open up our community centers to provide a space for kids to go during the holiday break. And what are parents telling you about these camps? Yeah, it's, we've been getting really great feedback from parents. Um, you know, they feel really fortunate when they still have to get in for work, that their kids have a fun and safe environment to be in um, during the holiday weeks. And what is their schedule like when they come here? At what time? And are they getting any snacks? Yeah, so our program, our camp program runs Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Uh, each day. And uh, included with your registration is a hot lunch each day as well as an afternoon snack. <laughs> and when you come here, there's so much energy, especially right now yeah. during the winter break. Talk to us about this. Like, the kids are excited to be here. Yeah, no, absolutely. And a lot of these kids at our community centers, you'll see they're, they've been coming for years. Uh, you know, they know our community center staff. Our, our supervisor here is really fun, brings a lot of energy to the uh, morning session, definitely. Um, just getting the kids warmed up, getting them active and loose uh, to start their day off. And you talked about earlier some arts and crafts for the holiday season. They're going to be doing that? Yep, absolutely. So we have a ton of holiday themed arts and crafts programs that they'll be able to do um, as well as the sports and fitness games um, and science and nature based programming too. And how much does it cost and where can people find out more information on this? Yeah, so uh, folks can go to saparksandrec.com to find a community center uh, near them and check a registration availability. Uh, to register their kid, it is $3 per day per child um, and that does include the lunch and snack each day. And there, there's a QR code for that as well. Yes, it's, yes, correct. So they can come by the center, um, they can scan that QR code uh, and it'll pull them directly to that community center site that they're at um, and get their kiddo oh. registered. A lot of parents are thinking to themselves, this is perfect, especially if I still have to go to work, if I have to do some last minute shopping or something. This is just a perfect place and a safe place. Um, can you talk to us about the COVID protocols that's in place here? Yeah, absolutely. So we are um, we are maintaining a thorough sanitization of our facilities. So participants and staff are washing their hands before and after each activity. Um, we are cleaning the space, um, you know, thoroughly between, between our programs and activities as we transition. Um, masks are recommended, uh, not required at this time time but um, you know we've been our staff have been doing a great job making sure that our staff and the participants are feeling safe and comfortable here there's so many different locations so this is just available all parts of this town yes absolutely so uh, we're here at Palm Heights right now but we do have uh, of our 18 community centers there's spread across the city of San Antonio, so we have locations north, south, east, and west sides of San Antonio. And I think it's only fair if we ask the kids if they're having fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys, are we having, are we having fun? Yes! <laughs> are you guys ready for Christmas? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's always a good time. A lot of great energy here at our camps, and uh, we feel really fortunate to be able to provide this for our communities. Awesome! Yeah, this is so much fun. And Max, this is your this is your area. This is the basketball court. You should be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. I was just saying the. When they pulled away, I was like, oh, I would challenge the kids to basketball. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what if they beat you? Oh. Well, good for them. <laughs> it's all about physical and mental fitness. They're good to go. Get them ready, Tiffany. <laughs> Thank you. I will. I'll prep them. I'll get them ready for Max. All okay. right. Bye, guys. Thanks, Tiff. <laughs> all right, a lot going on in and around San Antonio. So before we get to Justin, another look at that crash on 35. Yeah, that was happening all morning. Stephen uh, Cavazos was on top of this. Uh, of course, it's still a mess out there, so you probably want to avoid this area. 
Oof. Now, we don't know what led to the crash, but Justin's been talking to us through the morning. You know, the fog, the, the wet roads could have attributed to it. Could have. You know, the, the fog was pretty thick earlier, and then also you get that mist, and it mixes with some of the oils on the road. Just when you get that sort of fine mist and drizzle, and it can make things pretty slick. So it's uh, it's one of those mornings. I do think the fog will lift. The clouds will get out of here. We'll get some sun this afternoon, but it's going to take some time before we get there. And I mentioned earlier, you're not going to like me for passing this along, but I have to. I'm obligated here. Pollen count is in. Mountain cedars in the very high category. You jumped up today big time. 10,080 molds are low. We're starting to move into the thick of mountain cedar season, and here you go. The numbers are reflecting that, so that's the latest there. Live cam outside. We've still got the low-hanging clouds. Fogs doing a little bit better. We're seeing some improvement here with the visibility. 59 at the airport, 61 Stinson, 59 Kelly, 59 at Randolph. We started the morning out at 48 actually much earlier this morning before the moisture moved in, the clouds moved in, and that's actually allowed temperatures to come up some. Visibility is still down to a quarter of a mile at the airport. Mile and a quarter at Randolph, up to a mile at Port SA. Hondo reporting some fog. Bernie Stage now seeing some fog. And it stretches up from New Braunfels back down to Uvalde and Eagle Pass as well. We're going to have to give this another couple of hours before the fog really gets better. And then it's probably about lunch hour, maybe a little bit after that we see the clouds lift and we uh, should get some sun. But you can see where uh, the fog and low clouds have set up here. So you can kind of pick out the line. Rock Springs actually looking in mostly clear skies. Del Rio, fog and cloud cover just starting to move in. But it's right along the I-35 corridor. And this time of year, it takes some time for the sun to kind of burn off those clouds and for that dry air to mix down. So again, it will probably be this afternoon before these temperatures really start to jump up, but we think they will. Right now, 59 in San Antonio, 60 Austin, 57 Kerrville. Look at the difference, the lack of moisture in clear skies make. 43 right now in Junction. You compare that to 60s down to the south of places like Tua and Junction. Dew points have really jumped up into uh, to near 60 now, so that's almost in the muggy territory, and all this is racing north. Still pretty dry out across West Texas, though, and pretty quiet for most of the state. There's not much going on. You got to go out west, and that's where all the action is today, and there's going to be a, quite a few issues, I think. Very heavy rain, very heavy snow on the higher elevations. There could be some travel delays out west if you're planning to head in that direction. Otherwise, the middle of the country and most of the east coast looking pretty nice. Our weather is uh, really under the influence of this ridge of high pressure. It, it's going to move a little bit closer in the coming days, and that means that we're going to continue to see the heat, and it will actually get a little bit warmer. 75 is what we're forecasting today. Tomorrow, up to 80 for Christmas Eve, and there will be a lot of 80s across Texas. Some records could fall. That'll be the case for Christmas Day, too. This afternoon, 75 once we lose the clouds. And looking at the extended forecast, we'll go 80 tomorrow, 83 for Christmas Day, 60 to start Christmas morning. There still could be some clouds and fog really each and every day. And this pattern continues right on into next week. Some fronts try to get close to the area, but don't have a lot of success, success moving through. So that means we're pretty much staying status quo here, and that's well above average, guys. Mm -hmm. And you were really looking for a front. Somewhere in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was digging through the models really trying, and I'm sure we'll get some, you know, here in the next couple of weeks, but there's just nothing in the immediate forecast that uh, calls for a cool down. All right. Thank you, Justin. Yep. All right. Thank you, Justin. 924, 60 degrees out. And still head on, GMSA at 9, a Louisiana tradition making a return this year. A look at how bonfires are used to help Santa. Welcome back. It's 927. A tradition in St. James Parish in Louisiana is returning this year after being canceled last year due to COVID. It's the lighting of the bonfires on Christmas Eve. People who live there say the fires help guide Papa Noel to the children in the parish. Austin Kempker spoke with some of the adults getting ready to bring the bonfires back. We always say it's the most wonderful time of the year, bonfire season. It's not just the adults looking forward to a fiery Cajun night before Christmas. Lots of awesome explosions, fire, warmness, awesome, awesome. and awesomeness. The return of the teepees lining the levees in South Louisiana can only mean one thing. Santa, Santa. is on his way, bringing toys to the little boys and little girls. There was some angst last year, weren't it, from some wondering, 
we will Santa Claus find St. James Parish without the bonfires, and he did, so there, we had a happy ending. Santa had to use GPS last year, but this year, some 130 plus bonfires lined the levees in St. James Parish. They're big and small, teepees and, well, tomahawks. Some more crabby than others. We came up with this one whenever we was boiling crabs. We just looked down in the pot and said, that'd be a good bonfire. And we went on ahead and built it. This year, Josh Whiteart with blood, sweat, and bonfires knew they had to bring their A game. <laughs> the return of the smile showed their hard work was worth it. It seems like everybody's kind of, you know, they, they got that feeling of, you know, you don't know what you got until it's gone. And last year it was gone. So everybody's out here enjoying it more. Um, we out here, you know, hanging out more, just appreciating what we got and, you know, appreciating this bonfire season, you know, just not taking it for granted. More than just the extravagant construction, Jason Amato, who's been building fires on the levee for decades, says the return of the fires on Christmas Eve is a return to normalcy after another hard year of COVID and hurricanes on the bayou. Oh, it's amazing. I got goosebumps just thinking about it because uh, it's, it's a wonderful time of the year for us in St. James Parish was Austin Kemker reporting. That was so cool. The kids in the beginning were the best part. Full of awesomeness. I think so. They're cute. Time now just about 930, 60 degrees out. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Don't forget to secure your home while you're away for the holidays. We're going to have some security tips to give you peace of mind. And coming up next, the San Antonio Food Bank continues to meet the needs of our community. An in-depth conversation about how the agency is helping families this holiday season and how you can help out all that in a live interview. Welcome back. The holidays right around the corner. So while many of us are worried about what's going to be under the Christmas tree, some San Antonio families, they're going to be worrying about where and when their next meal will come from. For a look at how the San Antonio Food Bank is helping those families this holiday season, we're going to bring in Eric Cooper. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me on and Merry Christmas to all of you. Yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So it's been really two years since the start of this pandemic. You know, from your perspective, what is this Christmas shaping up to be, especially compared to last year? Well, I think there's just a tremendous amount of uncertainty. I think the holidays bring some expectation on families, and they're still worried about catching the virus. They're worried about how they're going to make those basic things happen, like put food on the table and be able to provide Christmas for their kids. And when you ask for donations, are you looking for any specific donations or do you just need volunteers? Well, we need four things at the food bank, food, time, money, and voice. Uh, food through food donations and any non-perishable food item that a family could donate to help another family is appreciated. Uh, you can volunteer, go to our website, learn about all the activities that you can engage in. Obviously, funding uh, goes a long way in helping us set the table and then, you know, using your voice, use your social media to get your neighbors, your friends, your family members involved. Um, it has been humbling to see some of the need that yesterday I was out delivering some homebound boxes to families. And uh, we came to a family that uh, uh, we had some gifts for their, their kids. But uh, when the volunteers asked if they should put them under the tree, the mom just said, embarrassed, uh, I don't have a tree. Um, and we just couldn't afford that. And so to be able to meet this need and to see the miracle of this season where so many are giving and stepping up, uh, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to provide for all the families that are going through a struggle this holiday season. You guys have been fantastic throughout this whole process. We remember those long lines when you guys had your first you know, massive food uh, I, I don't even know like at this a, point. A, well, yeah, the food drive, like because food drive. I mean, we were there when the lines were down the street at the AT&T Center. Have you seen those lines go down recently? I mean, we're now about two years into this pandemic. Are you seeing the need go away at all? You know, it's a great question. And I, and I am so grateful for all the time you and I spent in the parking lots of either the Alamo Dome or AT&T Center or uh, other um, locations as we were meeting the needs of families. And at the peak, we fed about 120,000 people a week. And that, that line has been shrinking to about 90,000 people a week. Um, so it's headed in the right direction. But if we were to go back two years ago, we, we were only serving 60,000 people a week. So I think there still is a, a, a high level of need, um, but we're, uh, again, optimistic that we're headed in the right direction and 
I just want to make sure that we have the food to, to meet those needs. And real quick, um, how can people help, you know, still, still being that there is a need out there? Well, real quick, if anyone is struggling, please reach out to us at the food bank. It's the same website at safoodbank.org. If you need help, just hit the get help button. And we want to make sure your family's taken care of. If you can give a little bit of help, uh, go to safoodbank.org, learn how you can volunteer, make a financial contribution, um, or just make a difference for a family. All right, Eric Cooper, thank you so much for your time this morning. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. And have you ever heard of turkey and gravy, candy corn, or Oreo candy canes? Not me. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> so our KSAT team tracked down some of the most unique seasonal candies created this year and challenged each other to figure out the flavors. First off, I don't even like candy corn to begin with. I thought candy corn was just for the one holiday. <laughs> There's some kind of meat. Like the initial taste is not good. Is it turkey? Why is that not candy? Ooh. If my turkey tasted like that, my family would not have eaten it. Oh. Um, here's the thing. That tastes <laughs> casserole, which is probably delicious, but not in candy cane or candy corn form. It's not sweet, it's not tart, it's just kind of gross. Oh, oh, ugh. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Okay, this is pretty good. Like a cotton candy or something like that. Like pumpkin pie or something? Tastes like sunscreen, but it's not that. Oh, it's caramel or pecan. It's pecan pie. Pecan. Caramel. Coffee? I hate coffee. This is definitely like coffee flavors. That is awful. Um, a candle. I can't with these, they're so gross. So I like stuffing and I like pumpkin pie, but I do not like the candy corn flavors of both of those things. Whoever's coming up with these, you missed the mark. That was really bad. <laughs> Why would you put me through that pain anyways? My present to you is taste testing these so you never have to try them. Don't, don't buy these. <laughs> Justin, you look like you were not happy with that struggling candy. you might have thought that was all set up it, they didn't tell us what we were doing i was mm -hmm. told to come meet at this location and all of a sudden there was <laughs> <laughs> it was jarring uh no it wasn't that bad but uh turkey candy no. corn just no it's not a good idea no i agree that simple uh let's look at the pollen count because i want to show it again if you missed it earlier mountain cedar very high ten thousand eighty. It really jumped up today, and I know it's causing a lot of people problems here. Mold, it's in a low category at 190. We're looking at temperatures right now. We're sitting at 60 at the airport. That temperature has steadily been rising through the morning. You see the cloud cover and some of that fog. That's going to thin out as we get towards the afternoon, and temperatures will make it back into the 70s today. But in the meantime, still dealing with some fog. Visibility is improving, but slowly. We're seeing that at the airport, New Braunfels, Seguin. These numbers have been steadily coming up, so the fog will continue to dissipate. The one exception is out towards Eagle Pass where visibility is still close to zero. Uh, again, temperatures, 50s and 60s, it's, uh, it's mild out there. And once those clouds burn off, we're up into the mid 70s this afternoon. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And we'll do this all over again, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, although it will be a little bit warmer. Another look at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, a quick look at the trans guide. There's that scene at I-35 at Weedner Road where earlier we had that Amazon truck just dangling off the, the highway. We're told that the driver of the truck lost control after someone cut him off there on the southbound lanes of I-35 near Weedner. Uh, you can see that the truck is not dangling anymore, but it's still a big mess. And so you might want to avoid the area there on the northeast side. All right, we are seeing a lot of people hit the roads also.
hit the airways because we know a lot of Americans traveling for the holidays this year, especially compared to last year. So if you are among the millions of people traveling to your destination, experts say now is the time to secure your home. Jen Sullivan has five things to do before you leave the home for the holidays. If you plan to travel over the holiday season, you're not alone. According to AAA, more than 100 million people will hit the road this holiday, and security experts say an empty home may be an invitation for burglars. The number one way that they're breaking into houses these days is that if the car is in the driveway and it has a garage door opener in it, all they have to do is break a window and they can just access that garage opener. Here are five tips to make sure your home is safe and secure while you're away for the holidays. Number one, keep the outside tidy. Don't let your mail or newspaper deliveries pile up. And if it snows while you're away, arrange for someone to shovel your driveway. In my years in law enforcement, we actually had burglars that would show up to houses and they'd intentionally shovel the, the driveway. But while they were doing that, they were actually breaking into the house. Number two, tell your neighbors to keep an eye out on your house and let them park in your driveway to make it look like someone is home. Number three, set up timers for your indoor lights so that they come on and off at different times of the day. Number four, Consider installing motion detector lights in the back of the house and in the driveway. It just is an uncomfortable feeling for an intruder to all of a sudden be lit up like that. It just makes it seem like they're there. And finally, call your local police department and ask if an officer can drive by your home periodically and make sure everything's okay. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. All right, another idea is to put up a sign that says, smile, you're on camera. Experts would say that even if you don't have a camera, the sign is a huge deterrent for would-be burglars. And we see a lot of those. Time now, 943 and 60 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. All right, we're going to have a look at this morning's sports headlines right after the break. Welcome back. Aggie fans, some bad news. Aggie football not competing in a bowl game this year. They were supposed to compete in the Gator Bowl, taking on Wake Forest, but... That is not going to happen. Head coach Jimbo Fisher announcing just yesterday that due to a combination of COVID issues with the football team, as well as season ending injuries, as well as the transfer portal, the Aggies not in a position to safely participate. That's after practice on Saturday was shut down. And we mentioned the transfer portal because remember, Zach Calzada, the quarterback, he entered the transfer portal. So he is out and they're not even sure who would play quarterback. Another college team we want to talk about here at home, like UTSA, University Incarnate Word, UIW, the Cardinals, they're going to look to build on their most successful season in program history. The team had a 10-3 finish that included their first ever outright Southland Conference title and their first ever playoff win. But now they're going to have to do so with a new head coach. Remember, Eric Morris, he took the job as offensive coordinator at Washington State. So the future of the program belongs to G.J. Kinney. He was a former co-offensive coordinator of UCF, and he was introduced just yesterday as the new Cardinals head coach. Plus, we got hoops tonight. San Antonio Spurs taking on the Lakers tonight in L.A. Tip-off set for 930 at the Crypto.com Center, the former Staples, Staples Center. Center. There you go. <laughs> Spurs coming back home on Sunday. Remember, they had that four-game road trip, and they are taking on the Detroit Pistons here at home. All right. We'll be glad to have them home. Hey, right, welcome home. Yeah. Go Spurs, go. When did they rename it the crypto.com? It was in the last six months. Yeah, so. it was pretty yeah. recent. Hmm. I still want to call it. You got to stay up with it. Well, historically, <laughs> oh, I mean, think about all those iconic games between the Spurs and the Lakers yeah. at not only here at home, but mm -hmm. also at the Staples Center. Yeah. It's true. It'll it's take true. a while for yeah. everybody to make that transition. You know, Justin <laughs> so. can dunk. Fun fact. We're talking about basketball. I heard. Yeah. Can't make a free throw, but he can dunk. Used to get oh. dunk. Used to get dunk. And that's true about the free throws. <laughs> why are you listening? Robert, why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing back here. Uh, back in the day. My good days. So anyway, mm. uh, let's take a look at uh, the warmest Christmases on record. Uh, 1955, we got up to 90 degrees here in San Antonio. That remains our hottest December temperature ever, by the way. And so I don't think we're going to be breaking any records on Christmas Day, but we're going to get close to that second uh, ranking there, 83, which was set back in 1964. That's what we're forecasting, 83. So we have the potential to have the second warmest Christmas on record here in San Antonio. Uh, looking at the forecast, we're looking for 80 tomorrow. Just like today, we'll see some clouds and some fog early and then break out in the mostly sunny skies. That'll be the case on Saturday, too. Uh, again, we're forecasting 83. We've mentioned that there is a lot of weather out west rain and snow, but so far, no delays. This was the case yesterday, too. Most of the airports looking pretty good right now, and most of the country will be all, uh, all good. I think it's out west where there's going to be any delays. That's where they'll be. 
places like Boise, Portland, maybe uh, parts of California. There's the scene at our airport, and we've still got some low hanging clouds here, but fog is slowly improving. 60 degrees, still some drizzle. Southerly winds at six miles per hour. Visibility has been uh, slowly rising around here, but we're up to about two and a half miles now at Port SA, three quarters of a mile at the airport. Hondo's improved. Uvalde is starting to improve a little bit, so I think you'll see the fog generally go away, but the clouds are going to take a little bit longer, probably through about lunchtime before they go away. 58 right now in Kerrville, 60 in New Braunfels, 60 in Gonzales, a mild morning. We started off in the 40s much, much earlier this morning, and temperatures have been steadily climbing. And there's a look at the dew points. That's one of the reasons it was considerably more mild this morning is uh, the moisture has been streaming in, and that's what also contributed to our fog. And the moisture stays right there in, in place through next week. Typically, this time of year, you get some fronts that would bring in drier air. It's just not happening, and that's why temperatures will also be warm. The satellite picture shows our area of clouds and fog generally along I-35 and then out to the west. Starting to see it shrink a little bit, and you'll see that trend really start to pick up uh, as we get towards lunch hours I mentioned, and then once the sun pops out, temperatures will jump up quite a bit. And uh, there's all the rain and snow out west. A lot of California is seeing some uh, weather right now from rain to snow, and it, there's just a, an area of moisture really surging in here, kind of a conveyor belt of moisture, if you will, moving right into California. And that's why they are seeing so much active weather. For us, though, it's all going up and over a ridge of high pressure, which is centered here in Mexico. And that's going to really influence our weather and keep things quiet, keeps rain out of the picture, and it keeps things pretty warm. Our forecast today, 75, once those clouds clear, and then they will build back in tonight. We're going to do this all again tomorrow, the morning clouds and fog, 80 degrees, 83 as we mentioned on Christmas. Really, we could see morning clouds and fog all the way into next week, and those temperatures staying well above average. We'll be right back. And do you have clothing in your closet that you do not ever wear? Not ever, mm. ever, ever. So if so, <laughs> now's your chance to make a little extra cash. We'll tell you about it tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a quick look out at the roadways right there. 35 at Weedner, the story we've been telling you about throughout the morning. At one point, there was an Amazon truck pretty much hanging off the highway. It looks like it has since been removed. Luckily, no injuries reported. We're going to keep you updated on the traffic in and around that area. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so the story we're supposed to talk about right now, there was a time capsule that was unearthed after about, I think, 137 years. Wow. Yes. 130-year-old time capsule opened. So instead of talking about that time capsule specifically, in 100 years, what would you guys want people in the future to see now? Wow, that's... Well, yeah. I'm sure... I, actually, the people who opened that one uh, mm -hmm. in, in Richmond, Virginia, now they're going to try to make another one from 2021. Okay. A lot of people, of course, are putting things that remind them of the pandemic. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. maybe an iPhone? An iPhone's um, a good yeah, one. It'll be, yeah. it'll be yeah. completely outdated. <laughs> Probably so. It might yeah. be outdated in like five years. <laughs> Have a great yeah. day, guys. See you at noon.